welcome to Cindy's Library. This is Cindy, and today I'm going to talk about what I read in the second half of the month of July. So, during work, I listened to The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. This is the second Miss Marple mystery. Um, well, basically, there is a body in the library. Um, not the squire, I think, but someone kind of similar, pretty high up there in the village hierarchy. No one has no idea who the poor girl is and or how she got there. And of course, uh, the wife is extremely worried about this because of how much it will worry about her. It will worry her husband. So, of course, she asks Miss Marple to do some investigating. We go to a larger town, maybe even small city that's relatively nearby. It's in within 20, 30 miles, I'd guess, where they do figure out the girl has came from and things go on from there. Well, of course, not everything is as it seems. I also continued along with Jane Austen July, which was wonderful. So they listed a number of short stories here for us to read. And I got to all of them, which means a fair amount of this I've actually read now. One of these years I'll have to finish up the rest. Um, let's see, some highlights. Um, this also has the Watson and Sanditon Fragments and Lady Susan, although I only read Sanditon this year. Let's see, uh, 174. So, <laughs> uh, some of these are short and silly. Some of these are fragments that were never completed or longer fragments that were never completed. This one I think may have been completed, The Beautiful Cassandra, a novel in 12 chapters dedicated by permission to Miss Austen. Dedication, Madam, you are a phoenix. Your taste is refined, your sentiments are noble, and your virtues innumerable. Your person is lovely, and your figure elegant, and your form majestic. Your manners are polished, your conversation is rational, and your appearance is singular. If therefore the following tale will afford one moment's amusement to you, every wish will be gratified of your most Obedient, humble servant, the author. Chapter 1. Cassandra was the daughter and only daughter of a celebrated milliner in Bond Street. Her father was a noble birth, being the near relation of the Duchess of blank Sh Butler. And that's all that's in Chapter 1 for this. And it goes on from there. Another Favorite would be the history of England. From the reign of Henry IV to the death of Charles I by partial, prejudiced, and ignorant historian. That basically sums it all up. And it's very funny where she goes off tirades against the Tudor, hates Elizabeth I, loves Mary, Queen of Scots, and, well, you can imagine just from that. I also finally finished all of the essays in A Truth Universally Acknowledged 33 Great Writers on why we read Jane Austen, which has been very interesting. Some of these authors I don't know, have some I haven't even heard of, some I have heard of. Susanna Clark. Um, Ian Forrester, C.S. Lewis, uh, Harold Bloom, Amy Bloom, Virginia Woolf. So I roughly read about a third of these this time, finally finishing it up. 
for which I am glad. Hard to give a general conclusion when each essay is so individualized. Some are about her works as a whole. Some are about particular works or about particular aspects of her work. How to reread this someday? But I enjoyed it in any case. So let's see for the Jane Austen challenges. Read works by Jane Austen, specifically Northanger Abbey in the first half of the month. Um, works that are not her six novels. I read Juvenalia. Um, Nonfiction about Jane Austen. I read A Truth Universally Acknowledged, 33 Great Writers on Why We Read Jane Austen. I also read, uh, it's based on a lecture I think Lord David Cecil gave on Jane Austen. I also read Sanditon. Uh, and that would be uh, not one of six Jane Austen's six main novels. Uh, for reading a contemporary of Jane Austen, I read The Lady of the Lake by Sir Walter Scott. Um, I also read A Season at Sanditon by Rose Servitova. Uh, she is, so this completes the Sanditon story. She is the one who wrote the Longbourn Letters, correspondence between uh, Mr. Bennett and Mr. Collins, which is qu quite amazing, actually. This one, I can't say I loved quite so much. Something's just not quite Jane Austen-y enough about it. But a very interesting setting, um, a heroine that's not quite so conventional and not even in a Jane Austen way. And we do have some hints of that in the part Jane Austen did, right? A great romance, uh, misunderstandings and other obstacles to young love, and finally, I really did love the ending for this. So I'm not sorry at all that I read it. So a modern story. Um, that's a Jane Austen retelling or somehow related to Jane Austen. So I read Godmersham Park by Jill Hornsby. This is about Anne Sharp who was a governess at Godgresham Park, which was held by Edward. He changed his surname from uh, Austin to Knight yet. I don't think he had at this point. He is the Jane Austen's third brother, Edward Austin. He was the one chosen by some rich childless relatives to inherit everything, the golden child of the family. And Anne Sharp was governess there, uh, to, particularly to his oldest daughter, Fanny, I want to say, in any case. I can't say that I loved this as much as Jill as Miss Austen by Jill Hornsby. Um, hard to talk about it without giving the ending away. On the one hand, everything ended in a way both acceptable to what little we do know about Anne Sharp and acceptable to the Regency period. On the other hand, definitely some modern thoughts there, which not for me so much, but I still overall enjoyed it. 
probably rate it uh, three and a half, four, something like that. Mr. Austin's four, four and a half at least. So that will give you some idea of that. So I read all of those for Jane Austen July. I also watched the 1997, is it 1997? Sense and Sensibility, the one with Emma Thompson and Alan Rickman and Hugh Grant. And wonderful to rewatch it. I might not be 100% faithful to the letter of the book, but it certainly is faithful to the feel of the book. And if they added a uh, well, amped up the romance part, that's what moderns like. Can't exactly blame them. So, and they did a wonderful job with it. So the last challenge was watching an adaptation that was not a direct adaptation. And I didn't get to that one. I had a family reunion this month, so I was crowding in as much as I could before that, but didn't get to that one. Oh, well, such is life. It was still a wonderful Jane Austen July. Read many, many wonderful things. Enjoyed myself thoroughly. What else? Did I read? I think the first one of these I read as maybe in me. But I finished up this set erstwhile, untold stories from the Brothers Grimm by Gina Biggs, Louisa Roy, and Ellie, Ellie Skinner. So, this is not Cinderella or Snow White or Sleeping Beauty. This is... Uh, Made Maylene. Ulfer, The Little Shroud, um, Worn Out Dancing Shoes, Dr. Know-It-All, The Three Lazy Ones. Um, let's see. King Thrushbeard, The Leftovers, Twelve Huntsmen. Each, uh, each of the contributors did their own set of stories, and they each have their own illustrations, but I think the actual text is mostly taken from the original Brothers Grimm. And yes, that means, uh, these are not necessarily sanitized versions. Not that the way it's portrayed is bad or anything like that. They're definitely discreet. But everything that bad that happens in the originals happens in these. And I quite enjoyed myself going through these again. These were a web comic first, and then I think they did a Kickstarter for the uh, physical copies. So I don't know if they are available anymore. I was very lucky to find them when I did and still enjoy them. And finally, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. Oh. Gorgeous artwork in here. The one interesting note is that the Nightmare Painter, he is blue and Yumi, she is magenta. So you'll want to keep an eye out for that. Uh, probably a most romantic story Brandon Sanderson has written yet. 
not surprising, this was another one he wrote for his wife. Absolutely loved it. And I have a full review coming up here shortly. So, that is all I read for the second half of the month of July. So, I hope... July was just as wonderful reading-wise for you. I have participated in uh, Jane Austen July. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much for stopping by. I truly do appreciate it. So until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading.